With new headlines hitting stands every day, the normalization between the U.S. and Cuba is affecting this developing country by the second. Tourism has always been present and the leading way for a young person to earn a living for decades. But these tourists have been nationals of Canada and Europe. Now all of a sudden, with the influx of Americans, the preparations have erupted. Two years ago, there was rubble, one shovel to go around, and little motivation. Maybe it's the proximity to the U.S. or the knowledge that we are all curious, tip-happy, and ready to spend. But it is clear to them that change is coming, they want to be ready for it, and sailors want to be the first ones there. A lot of one bag to bring Cuba and this chase boat. And they all just asked me, they all just asked me, who's this is the orange bag? It's a little bigger than all the other ones. <laughs> but I'm the lady, yeah. and I have a lot of gifts for everybody. And you have all the gifts. Yeah, You're the bearer of the gifts. Two countries divided by water plus normalization between said countries after 50 years of an embargo and travel restrictions equals 50 plus boats more than happy about the Conquer Public Cup announcing their plan for a distance and inshore racing adventure between Key West, Veradero, and Havana. And this started just because of a lot of maritime tradition between Key West and Cuba. This will be the 8th Conquer Public Cup, even though it hasn't been done in 13 years. Commodore Street at Club Nautico Marina Hemingway invited us to come back and start sailing there again. We're ready to show them that we want to see some good racing down there. They cannot use uh, U.S. channels. Their radios are not equipped with that. So, we're, And we are in international water, so we're using International 6-8. Well, the point is that we just have the maritime tradition, and we want to continue that, and we wanted to restart that and, and keep things going again the way we've always had them with all of our Cuban neighbors. We've got a lot of Cuban neighbors right here on this island. So it really ties in together well with the entire culture of not only Cuba, but with Key West being such a big part of each other. I sang the national anthem at the welcome party. We were sniffed out by dogs, made final preparations. There's more lists. There's Does everybody lists. have a whistle if you go over? No. There's the lists. lists. I have two. What we gotta buy? What we gotta do? Have... And finally, the Key West Veradero leg arrived. Our vessel for this adventure was a J88 called MI2, short for Mission Impossible 2, belonging to Dave Malkin of North Point Yacht Sales. Adios. Bye bye, adios America. We'll be back. <laughs> Kitted out and quarters thrown over the side for good luck, we all collected our thoughts on the way out to the starting line. You gotta get the Cunningham off and the Bang off. We were slated to be the smallest boat of the fleet, which only excited us. Veritas checking in. Mission Impossible 2 checking in. Murphy was the first of the wide array of boats to follow all of the arrows in Key West that point south, stating 90 miles to Cuba. All right, go! Go, go! Set, set, set! A race that long doesn't put too much logistical emphasis on the start, but it is still a significant moment. We're good, Jared. We're good. The first sanctioned race to Cuba, 
So close, but so far in many ways. Thoughts? Thoughts on the way to Cuba. Great start. Beautiful sunset happening. Couldn't be better. I've got so many butterflies in my stomach. They've been churning for 48 hours just ready to get on this start. And so excited to be out at sea again. Right there. So sunsets at at uh, six ten and moon rises at eleven thirteen. What time is it now? It's five fifty. Sailing offshore overnight means getting ready for things well in advance. Preparing for darkness starts with dressing warmer, drier, and safer while there is still light. There will only be the glow of the navigation lights and instruments to see by sooner than you think. Land gets farther away, darkness gets closer, visibility and a sense of place fades. This is exactly when you want to be physically connected to the boat. There's no real sleep when racing overnight, and the sunset isn't the only thing you notice anymore. The moonrise changes the trip from stargazing to being able to see the rolling waves around you. The boat goes from the only small thing between you and darkness to an even smaller thing between you and a deep, breathing, swelling ocean. When we crossed that finish line and we're in Cuba, it felt better than any other finish line I've ever crossed. Great team, great guys, and amazing to know the trip was only just beginning. So we just completed the sail to Cuba. We're pulling into Veradero. Fantastic sail. No, no jibes. Set the kite at the start. No jibes. The whole crew was phenomenal. And I, I've done a fair amount of distance racing, and this race was really excellent. I'm doing this because I get to land in Cuba, and that is something really out of the ordinary. Well, for now, anyway. So we wanted to be on the first, uh, the first CRC to, that's really out in the new opening. So that was our plan. Having 54 boats arriving at the same time has its benefits. Marina Gaviota and Veradero was ready to greet us, one at a time, after hailing in on the radio, and we were escorted into their mooring docks. By this point, the rest of Eastern Standard Time was waking up, and we had recovery time yep. while waiting for our turn to go through customs. All right, we have our, that's our cruising flag, but we, now we need to fly that while we're in Cuban waters, right? Yeah, and it's right side up. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Point up. Conquer Republic up. Culture exchange through sport. Yes. Sir, we've got a flag. And, very importantly, Eastport Yakov flag. Yeah, yeah. Our home port. Representing. We thought it a bit funny for us Americans to arrive with booze and gambling. That's why I didn't say hit me last time when I was dealing. Come on. But we didn't let that stop us. One at a time, they came. Passport control, the doctors to purchase health insurance from, and all the rest, until you're clear and you're allowed onto the dock. Here's Ashley, stepping onto Cuban soil. I think I got it. Oh yeah, oh my gosh. It's good to get off that boat. I feel like I've had a wedgie for the last 12 hours. Oh Lord, Ashley, hi. It's true though, when you wear all that gear and all the straps and... <laughs> You've all heard of the historic cars and how cool they are. Some of them are Bristol, and some require a pull of a wire hanger and a kick to get the trunk open. But either way, the best part is that they are big, and they can fit six passengers with gear. <laughs> Veradero is an example of Cuba preparing for an influx of tourists. Twisty roads to help you get lost, and resorts dot the peninsula like Monopoly buildings. 
the majority of tourists get trapped here by the all-inclusive deals. And for most, this is all they experience. Two years ago, Gaviota was merely a few cement slabs and some cranes. Now it is growing so rapidly with plans to become an even bigger, larger hub for tourists coming by boat. So if you're going to come to Cuba, go soon. Everything is changing really fast. Uh, maybe a little bit too fast. Hey, so Mission Impossible is over there cleaning up and stuff, and uh, turns out we got third last night. That's really great news. Uh, they aren't racing today, so bobsled is taking me in for the day. We'll do some buoy racing. We had to turn in a slip of paper with all of our names on it to make sure that we leave with the same amount of people that we come back with. And that's, that's what sailing in Cuba is about. You know, just make sure everything's in line. And we're so, right, we're so sick about racing in Cuba, buoy racing. To get ready for the inshore race, the offshore gear was removed off the boat. It's one of the things that makes the Conquer Public Cup so unique, getting to do both distance and buoy racing. I got a call a couple of months ago, asked me if I'd be interested, and I said, uh, where are we going? They said, Cuba. I said, yes, I'm interested. So I, that pulled me in right there. Just the word Cuba. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, have you been here before? What are your first impressions? Then? Never been to Cuba. It's a great country. The people are extremely friendly and bend over backwards to take care of you. It's a really nice place to visit. For the Americans, it is the fact that it's an opportunity to get to Cuba. For the Cubans, it's an opportunity to have a whole bunch of Americans come in and, and learn a little more about us. And the exchange so far has been fantastic. Well, the sailing aspect fits in because there are actually quite a few sailors in Cuba. The normal bond between sailors, I, I think, that transcends country boundaries and, and politics and, and just gets everybody together. We've got uh, Cuban teams that will be racing in the, in the uh, races here, and it gets everybody out there having fun and the, and the camaraderie that develops as a result of that. I'm born here in Cuba, 100% in Cuban men. So I live in Matanza, have a nice family. I work here, we are the sailor, and the sailor too. What kind of boats do you sail? Uh, Hobby cats. Big, big catamarans, big, big catamarans, yeah, yeah, yeah. They look really gorgeous. How did you start sailing? Uh, uh, all the life. Yeah, forever, since you were a little boy? Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, because uh, it's the school, uh, the sailing school, yeah. uh, the later wars is the war of the sailing too. Oh, so th when you're a little boy, you can go and do a sailing uh, school? Uh, 12 year. 12 years old. Yeah. I How like long? to sail. You like it? Why do you like to sail? Well, because it's so fun. I like the, the ocean. Yeah, it's good. Nature and the, the yeah. smell, yeah, yeah, how it feels. Yeah, me too. I feel very good, yeah. That's when the same I sail, I feel very good. <laughs> Why do you like to sail? Um, I sail the um, competition, for example. Hmm? Competition. Competition? Oh, so you race too. Yeah, it's a kid. It's a... Yeah. No, it's very good for me, but what? So, <laughs> Are you good? I'm more better for me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you good? Are you good racer? Yeah. All right. yeah. So good luck in the race. I'll be winning here again. Good luck. It's weird. I had some fluffy numbering assumption thing. That uh, our positions from back to front are uh, Otto and Ashley are going to do the runners. Uh, Bob's driving, I'm going to do the main. Andrew's going to be primary Hetzel trim. Uh, Tyler, you're going to be secondary Hetzel trim and pit. And Grady's going to do bow. So I'll say ready to tack. Three, two, one, tacking. And at ready to tack, I think Ashley goes to lure. And three, two, one, tacking, you go high speed, back stay on. Ready? Ready guys? Three, two, one, one. Nope. Alright, Racing on the CNC bobsled for the intra race was a rush. That boat performed well amongst heavier, longer boats around the course, and being part of Bob Moran's team was an experience I would love to repeat. 
Salona, Salona, this is Bob Flair, Bob Flair on 6 I uh, would just like to inquire if uh, you have any spare beers, frosties, or liquid sambos on board. Uh, we are willing to pay top dollar for this. If you would be so kind to tape them to the fender and chuck it overboard, we're happy to pick up the merchandise. <laughs> There they are, they're not too far away. Let's do it. Oh, yes. 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 Woo! Hey, from Argentine people! <laughs> <laughs> you guys are heroes! <laughs> Alright, this one goes to the translator. <laughs> Katie? That's for Bob? That's some good Bob. The party at the Gaviota restaurant for all the participants started with rum. Oh, thank you very much. Continued with the regional food. <laughs> celebrated with our third place from Key West Veradero Trophy and ended with music and performances by some of the locals. <laughs> With the process so thorough for leaving for a different port in Cuba, we beat the sun up to prepare for the second distance leg of the regatta to Havana. Sir, make six people, no change, no change. Harbor Master, this is Mission Impossible. We've cleared customs and we're heading out. Sorry, uh, all the. Oh no, no hassle at all. It's all good. Thank you. We know uh, now. We know for next time how to do it better. Yeah, okay, I see you here. So when we see you here next year, we'll be. Right through. All right. Bye. All right, take care. Bye, Tom Girls. Yeah. Gaviota is one of only two places big enough to handle this size regatta, and we were on our way to the second place. Only half big enough right now. Yeah. Going that way, and then we'll back and go that way. I'm, I'm, pu I'm putting out a, I'm putting out a custom charcuterie plate. <laughs> <laughs> Jared, learn to tie a bow in again. Mike, doing his usual good job on spinnaker trim. Kevin, thinks we're all wackos. Peter, who has decided that the course is so straight that even he can drive. Long distance legs fall prey to telling jokes, telling stories, and finding out how connected to Cuba we were getting because of sailing. Behind me here is a star sail from my grandfather's sailboat, which he kept in the Havana Biltmore uh, Yacht Club in uh, Havana, Cuba. One of the things my mother would tell me, since my grandfather owned a textile factory in the outskirts of Havana, was that he would take his mainsail and dye it red, so my mother can see where he was at all times uh, from the beach. We found a letter that he wrote to Skip Etchells, uh, ordering a new star boat. This was probably his second or third star boat back in 57 for the Havana Worlds and the, uh, I guess it was a Bacardi Cup race also. So in 1960, the Cuban government nationalized the Biltmore Yacht Club and along with all the boats there. He lost the star sailboat, but he proceeded in taking everything that he can unbolt off that boat, including all the sails, the hardware, and shipped it back to Miami. In his garage, we found these sails wedged into the corner, uh, into uh, duffel bags. My grandmother would say, Michael, can you please take them home? You're, since you love sailing, bring, bring the sails home. Brought it back to Annapolis, uh, brought it to North Sails, and had them cut it down to a flag. And uh, bringing it back for the first time after 55 years in memory of my grandfather. There it is. 
Oh, I feel great about flying the flag over the city of Havana in tribute to Harry and his wonderful life here for about 30 years before he left. We've returned it. It's catching Cuban air again. That's right. Uh, uh, my mother would love to see this. Michael went on to explain to me why the embargo can't just be lifted with a snap of the fingers. Hundreds of thousands of claims were made for lost property and has been accruing interest all these years. Amongst many other factors, all of the claims must be repaid before the embargo can dissolve. Just like the conditions that start a hurricane must equalize for the storm to recede. 15 hours after we started and 20 hours since we woke up, we were escorted to the Marina Hemingway Customs Dock and directed to a wall to tie up to with hopes that we'd be able to find a ride to Havana. Luckily, the guy at the gate knew a guy and arranged for him to come pick us up. <laughs> we're wondering if our cab is actually coming. What time is it? No, I'm not wondering. Do, do I it's look time, like I'm wondering the, if it's coming? It's time for the taxi to be here. Yeah. What, what time of day is it really? Like 2? Well, 30? Uber. Uh, it's no, almost it's four. It's almost four. All right, are you ready for the next part? Yeah. Show me, show me how to exercise after getting off a boat. Wow! That's not a stretch. That's actually legit. I don't know how much loopier we could have gotten if that cab hadn't saved us. Hong Kong. <laughs> The streets of Havana look completely different at night versus the daytime, but we found our gated apartment building and our hosts were awaiting our arrival. This way we're going to The last room, right? Yes, look at that. Oh, gracias. Tu casa is very beautiful. Hi, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Dormitorio solo monte yo. <laughs> nice. Rawr. <laughs> you is you only in the in the room. Okay. But in the other room has yes. two beds. Okay. You prefer one. You prefer this. Yeah. This okay. is great. Okay. Okay. Look. Look. Tips for travel to Cuba, as with most developing countries. Avoid drinking the tap water. There's no hot water in the showers. Don't flush anything down the baño. Most everything can be accomplished by smiling, and everyone you meet has an incredible story to tell you if you keep your eyes, ears, and heart open. Esta es la casa de Álvaro López. Yo, eh, de muy pequeño, me incorporé a todo el proceso. Es decir, yo tenía 16 años cuando empezó la revolución, y un día Fidel Castro pidió que necesitaba estudiantes de nivel preuniversitario para ser profesores en la Sierra Maestra. Y allá un grupo de compañeros nos fuimos a formar como maestro en plena Sierra Maestra. Y iniciamos con eso toda una carrera de participación en los cambios de la vida social que nos fue llevando entre trajines épicos y trajines culturales a la Universidad de La Habana, donde nos iniciamos en la enseñanza de la filosofía marxista a las nuevas generaciones de profesionales cubanos. Y así eh, terminé mi vida profesional y luego problemas de salud y refugiarme en este pequeño refugio donde me incorporé rápidamente a ofrecerle a mi pueblo y a mi país los recursos que podían derivarse de los impuestos de la actividad de la renta turística. El final, con la misma felicidad con que he vivido todos estos años en que me he dedicado a aquello que he querido y que mi país ha necesitado. El actual momento para todos los cubanos es de una expectativa muy grande por cuanto durante 50 años se ha esperado la normalización de las relaciones con los Estados Unidos y diferentes 
hechos han impedido eh, que se pudiera avanzar en distintos momentos eh, en que la presidencia de Estados Unidos ha estado en, en alguna disposición, pero no han podido como ahora el actual presidente ha logrado avanzar. Para Cuba es muy importante el levantamiento del bloqueo. Los cubanos eh, necesitamos actitud del pueblo norteamericano hacia Cuba que nos permita vivir como buenos vecinos. La Habana es una ciudad bella, eh, hospitalaria, acogedora. Eh, Cuba es un pueblo pacífico, tranquilo, eh, se, se camina por nuestras calles eh, con total tranquilidad y eh, nuestro país está abierto a todas las posibilidades de relaciones económicas, de inversión. Nuestro apóstol de la independencia, José Martín, eh, amaba al pueblo norteamericano y escribió muchas crónicas acerca de la vida norteamericana, elogiaba el espíritu de trabajo y emprendedor del pueblo norteamericano. El pueblo cubano ha demostrado en estos años que también eh, posee ese mismo espíritu y así lo han demostrado nuestros ciudadanos en Estados Unidos, eh, como esa comunidad ha crecido y ha hecho eh, elevar la riqueza. No ha sido una comunidad dependiente. Ese mismo pueblo en Estados Unidos eh, ayuda a este trance. So, hello everybody, I want to explain to you now the best mojito in the whole city. Mojito 7. 7, what, what we put that name? Because we use Havana Club 7 Year. If you don't know, Havana Club 7 Year is one of the most famous rum. Create for Havana Club Company. And it's the most famous that. So, we put Mojito 7 and we change many ingredients. But we keep the same base. Sugar, lemon juice, and mint. Later we change the sparkling water for tony water. It's not about your drink, it's about why you drink that. Why do you prefer to drink that? And Havana Cruz seven years, three property. First is aperitif. Second is digestive. And the most important, they give you energy. Because it's taste, it has a little touch of fish and fruits and caramel. And when you smell and enjoy that, your body wants more. And you find that, okay? So it's a little secret from the Figaro in Havana, Cuba to the whole world. Never forget that name, the Figaro. We will be famous in, in a few years. <laughs> And Take said, care, everybody. You said your secret ingredient was love. Oh. And by the way, the secret ingredient that we put is love. When you put love in all the things that you do, everything will be amazing. Between the mojito, my favorite Cuban song being strummed by the roving two-man band, and curiosity over the samba, I had to jump in. It's a fairly basic step, just behind the beat, like the drums in good jazz. Cuba is a country of much beauty, natural, of much richness cultural. For the Habana Vieja, all that immense quantity de recursos culturales, toda esa villa llena de arquitectura maravillosa, eh, que es encanto de Europa, que es encanto de España, eh, nuestros eh, campos, el clima, la vegetación, nuestras playas, eterno verano. Así que eh, podrás, habrás podido eh, tener una imagen de lo agradable de la vida en nuestro clima y en nuestra situación. Es decir, Cuba, en el Golfo, en la llave del Golfo, es un lugar paradisíaco, donde los norteamericanos siempre han encontrado un lugar ideal para vivir, como lo muestra Hemingway y otros norteamericanos que hicieron de esta ciudad y de esta isla su hogar y su vida. 
Alvaro spoke like most Cubans, who still swear by Marxism, but also want a free market for entrepreneurs. And they want independence, but it's going to be reliant on the U.S. economy. Basically, they want it all, but there's still a long list of things that will need to be resolved. Every doorway of the once grand buildings in Old Havana used to belong to the wealthy. Then they were sectioned off, and as many as 10 families would be assigned to live in each one. Now the stairwells holding a paint color are the only signs of pages and chapters being turned. These walls have heard everything. This artist and sculptor uses not only paint, but paint chips from those very walls to tell a story on canvas. It's another example of Cuban creativity, resourcefulness, and recycling. What were these parts of uh, automobiles or yes, cars? This is a far from our only. In the few short days I have spent in Cuba and Havana, I already felt the familiarity setting in. The island has a soul you can't build overnight. Soul comes from history. Seeing structures and picturing all who have danced there, lived there, dined there. Rubble is turning into structures again. Great care is going into the design of new buildings, but more importantly, the restoration of existing structures. I hope this means the soul will survive here. Marina Hemingway was our welcome and our farewell point of departure, and a bad weather forecast was pressing our leaving to sail back to the U.S. forward in time. The Hemingway International Yacht Club and its Commodore were the catalyst for the Conquer Public Cup beginning again and for the camaraderie all sailors seek to experience. Nací en una ciudad portuaria, Santiago de Cuba. Tuve el llamado del mar desde joven o desde niño. Entré en la Academia Naval de Cuba para hacerme Cuban Navy Officer. Tuve 30 años en la Cuban Navy, finish de commander, y después fundé este club náutico hace 24 años. Soy su comodoro. Es lo único que he hecho en mi vida. Amar el mar y desear que mi país, que es un archipiélago, tuviera un desarrollo marítimo importante. La regata República de la Concha es un evento para mí muy importante que me llena de felicidad el hecho de que 13 años después de estar prohibida logramos revivirla convirtiéndose esta en la mayor regata que hemos hecho hasta ahora de Cayo Hueso a La Habana. Esta regata viene a sumarse gracias a la labor de nuestro Jet Club porque además me llena de satisfacción el hecho de que en esta regata hay representantes de la comunidad náutica de varios estados de la Unión Americana. Por lo tanto, yo pido, anhelo, que esta regata se convierta en un clásico importante en los circuitos de regata del sur de la Florida. 12% of the earth is inhabited by man. It is tread on every day, discovered centuries ago by somebody else. 71% of the earth is reserved for us. There are no roads, no buildings, no fast food takeout restaurant, no cell phones, and whether military, commerce, or sport, we're all called sailors and all share many traits in common. With sailing being the most thankless, fameless, dangerous, and varying sport, the people are the most honest, humble, brave, and versatile athletes on the planet. There are no referees to penalize us when we're wrong. There's no cheering audience. There are no field lights, no pit stops, no timeouts or rain delays. It's why when a sailor meets a sailor, they're fast friends. They both know each other's soul instantly, no matter what the nationality, race, age, or religion, because people of the sea are their own breed. Almost one year ago today, I was diagnosed with cancer. I was told I had 20% chance to live two years. I immediately put on my bucket list to do this race. I crew, I, I've done chemo, I've done radiation, I've fought the fight. 
there, there was some pitching coming back on my boat from Havana. There's some big sea, a lot of wind, some sea sickness. But I was smiling my ass off. I had the stars above my head and the keel below my feet. And that's where I needed to be. So, I just wanted to publicly thank my crew and my fellow sailors and all the support they've given me. I'd also like to report that two months ago I went back to the doctor. They couldn't find no cancer. The sea is always tempting us to conquer her but it will always be too lofty of a goal. Luckily for sailors, we get to keep trying our entire lives. If you go far enough, everywhere is connected by water, including two countries that have been trading only food and medicine under a 54-year-old embargo. You don't conquer Mount Everest by taking a helicopter and jumping out at the top. You have to make the decision to put your life in others' hands and watch every inch of the earth pass under you. Best way to end a great offshore run right here. Nice Cuban, Cuban sandwich. What is a Cuban sandwich? Well, this one happens to be ham and cheese, but it was made by Cubans, so therefore it's a Cuban sandwich. <laughs> Sailing to Cuba is the only real way to discover the country. Good luck conquering the ocean, everyone. I'll see you out there. Maybe as a teammate or as a competitor, but either way, as a fellow sailor.